Buy your stat 66111 Skills for the rest of your life Bootstraps and probability It's the bread and butter, baby, what's your jam? Greetings Bio 6611. In this lecture we're going to discuss some common discrete distributions including the Bernoulli, Binomial, and Poisson. Let's start with a quick refresher in general of what a discrete random variable is. Now even more generally a random variable is a variable whose values depend on some random phenomenon or data generating process. Possible values are represented then by the range of possible outcomes of this yet to be performed experiment. Now we denote this range of possible values as the sample space. And in the context of our notation, we generally use capital letters with this sort of italicized font to denote a random variable like this capital X. Specifically for discrete random variables, we have the case where the sample space is a discrete list of values. So for example, this might be something like letting x our random variable denote a random experiment of flipping a coin where the possible outcomes are heads or tails. Alternatively, this could be something like a count distribution counting the number of outcomes, which is a discrete numeric list, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. We characterize in this discrete random variable by a probability mass function or PMF and this is the function that gives the probability that our random variable x is equal to the given value or values we're looking at in the sample space. A few things to note, the first is that our values must be non-negative and sum to 1 and for our notation k represents those values that are in our sample space like heads or tails above and then the probability of x our random variable being equal to k will be some function which is our probability mass function that depends on k. So just a brief again PMF example, here we see that our sample space is these three possible outcomes of the values 1, 3, or 7. They have different probabilities at the top and down below we just see a graphical representation here of what that looks like with the 20% probability for our random variable x being equal to 1, 50% for 3, or 30% for x equal to 7. So with that brief recap of what a discrete random variable is, let's dig into some of these named established distributions, starting with the Bernoulli distribution. A Bernoulli random variable or distribution is one where the sample space is composed of two discrete possible values. For example, it might be like our coin flipping example where it's either heads or tails, or whether a good pupper is able to catch a treat you toss their way, a success or a failure. Now again, we often call one outcome or classify it as a success, but again, this is an arbitrary way of defining the problem or thinking about it. But if we continue with this sort of thought of a success or failure, we often let one represent whatever we're calling a success and zero represent a failure. The nice thing about the Bernoulli random variable or distribution is that it only relies on a single parameter, this little p here. And that gives the probability of success, which can range between 0 and up to 1, where a probability of 0, of course, is no chance of success, and a value of 1 is assured success without any chance of failure. The probability ma mass function for this Bernoulli random variable can be written, as we see here, as p raised to the kth power, and that times 1 minus p to the 1 minus kth power, which really, because we only have two possible outcomes, it's simplified to these two choices of it's either the probability of x equals 1, which is equal to p, or the probability that x equals 0 and is a failure equal to 1 minus p. Now, the interesting thing about the Bernoulli distribution is that it only relies on a single trial or a single coin flip. Many times we're interested in actually looking at multiple trials or experiments, and this is where the binomial distribution can become very handy. So continuing our examples from before, suppose we want to count the number of successes within uh, many repeated Bernoulli trials. The number of successes then will become a binomial random variable or a distributed binomial distribution uh, random variable. For example, if I throw five treats at my pup, how many do they catch? Now in this case we actually have two parameters. We have that value p we had before, that probability of success within one trial, and we still have this range of values from 0 up to 1 with the same meaning we had before. The other thing we now have to consider though is this value over here n. 
and that's the total number of trials we're conducting, where n is going to be some integer value, uh, 0, 1, 2, um, and up. The Bernoulli distribution is a special case of the binomial when n is equal to 1. Now, the binomial PMF is a little more complicated than the Bernoulli, but we can see a few little components that we had from before. For example, we see this interior piece here looks quite similar to the values we saw before. We can see then we also have the addition of this new term, this n choose k binomial coefficient that's added as part of our probability mass function, where we can see that k will take values uh, of 0 up to the number of trials n, or the number of successes we expect to observe. Now again, because we have 0 up to n possible values in our sample space, we see that instead of just two realizations, we actually have this more complex representation, where if we expect 0 successes, if we were to plug in k equals 0 to that equation above, we see that we have 1 minus p to the nth power, and so on. Now you might be wondering, what is this nk binomial coefficient term we see in the binomial PMF, and what's its definition? So let's address both of those questions and how I can calculate them by hand if needed here on this slide. So first, the reason why we actually need this binomial coefficient term is to account for the fact that there are multiple ways we could get k successes out of n different trials. For example, say we throw our pup three treats. So in this case, our random variable x is going to be distributed as a binomial distribution with n equals three or three trials and some probability of successfully catching that treat. Now, we want to know the probability that they catch, let's say, two of those three treats, or two successes. So what we're really saying is we want to calculate the probability that x is equal to two. Well, it turns out that with this information, there are a total of three different ways this could happen. Our dog could catch on the first and second, the first and third, or the second and third throws. All three of these scenarios represent two possible successful catches out of three trials. So in general, n choose k, or that binomial coefficient that we see again right here, is the number of ways to choose k elements from n possible elements in any possible order. So order does not matter. And mathematically, we can represent it as we see as equation one on this slide, where n choose k is going to be equal to n factorial divided by n minus k factorial times k factorial. Fortunately, however, a lot of this work can be done for us behind the scenes using programs like R or SAS. And with that, let's take a look at how we can actually leverage and use the binomial distribution in R. And for this example, let's try simulating 10,000 samples from a random variable x, which is binomially distributed with a sample of n equals 8 trials and a probability of success of 0.5. So imagine we could say we're doing five coin toss or eight coin tosses with a 0.5 probability. Now, we're going to use the R binom function in R to generate these random binomial observations. And so the first thing to note is that we do need to simulate our data. We should set our seed for reproducibility. And so don't forget to set that seed so in the future we can recreate our results and not have a totally different set of results that may be similar or potentially very different from what we saw this first time. Here then we're going to note that there are some interesting things with the way R has its arguments that can be a little tricky to deal with, and so let's just break this down for a second, where in the context of R's arguments, the term n is actually going to represent the number of simulated samples we wish to examine. Whereas here then, size is going to represent what we've been calling n in our actual probability mass function or writing out that formula. Now p will just be equal to that probability of 0.5, but it is important to note it's easy to get n and size as these two arguments confuse, so we should just be careful with that in the future. Now, from this generated 10,000 samples of possible up to eight successes out of those 10,000 trials, we can make a histogram to show that probability of observing the number of values from this. So what we see here is that we have our values for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or eight successes. What we can see then is that if we have four successes, that's actually the largest or most observed frequency out of our 10,000 trials. 
And that makes sense once we get to the mean and variance calculation of a binomial distribution because really we have a 50-50 chance of succeeding and so we would expect that on average half the time we would see success and half the time we would see a failure. Of course, though it is important to note, this is a random sample. So we do see there are circumstances where we actually do observe these extreme cases of zero or eight, none or total success in our simulated trial. Now there are other functions we've seen and we'll also see for other distributions as well that we can use in R. For example, if we wish to calculate the PMF for a given binomial distributed random variable, we can use the D binom function in R. D is for the density of that distribution, or in other words, to calculate the probability that x is equal to the specific number of observations k. If instead we want to look at the cumulative distribution function, or the probability that x is less than or equal to some number of successes, we can use the p binom function within R. This will then calculate for us, instead of having to do d binom over and over and over again, this calculation for our CDF. And finally, if we want to know um, what corresponds to our binomial function or distribution, we can use qbinom to calculate the quantile function or it's the smallest value of k we would need or could observe, such as the probability that x is less than or equal to k is greater than some given probability value. So let's just see what this looks like in practice in R. Here we can see that we're again assuming our sample uh, has eight trials with a probability of 0.5 for success. We can see that if we want to again calculate that probability mass function in that second bullet point, we can use D binom, where we see here the PMF, x equals two, size equals eight, and probability of success equals 0.5. We see then we could calculate this by hand from the PMF on the earlier slide, and it should match this value of 0.109. Likewise, if we want to say in our third bullet point, what is the CDF when X is less than or equal to two? We see that that is down here using the P binom function, which is equivalent to actually using D binom over and over and over again for zero, one, and two for our possible values of X. And so with that, let's pivot to look at the Poisson distribution as our final named distribution of interest. A Poisson random variable represents the number of successes that occur in a given time or space. Now for a, a distribution or a random variable that is Poisson distributed, we see the sample space is going to be discrete with a possibility for infinite outcomes. In other words, we represent this by things like countable numbers, zero, one, two, three, and so on, but it can become infinitely large. We can keep observing more and more successes in a given time or literal space of an area. Now, the Poisson random variable is often used to describe rare events. For example, the number of meteorites greater than one meter in diameter that strike Earth each year, or the number of infectious cells in a well. There is one parameter we consider here in the Poisson distribution, which is known as lambda, and it's the rate parameter. It can range from zero up to also essentially infinity. Much like we saw for the binomial distribution and we'll see for other distributions in R, we have a family of functions to calculate the density, the probability mass function, CDF, and things like that. The probability mass function, if we wanted to do it by hand for the Poisson distribution, is written here, where the probability of observing k successes in a given amount of time or a given space of an area is represented by e to the negative lambda times lambda raised to the k divided by k factorial. One interesting thing about the Poisson and the binomial is that there's a relationship where the Poisson can be used to approximate the binomial. For example, if x is a random variable that is distributed as a binomial distribution with n and p, and we say that n is large, usually something like 100 or more, and the probability p is small, usually something less than 0.01, then x can actually be approximated as a binomial distribution where lambda is equal to n times p. In other words, the distribution of our binomial random variable will converge to a Poisson distribution as an approximation where lambda, that rate term, equals n times p. Now, the reason for this approximation could be that in the past, calculating things like the binomial distribution with that binomial coefficient by hand would be quite challenging, whereas the Poisson while having some other terms of its own, like our e to the 
uh, power might be challenging are probably more efficient. However, with modern computers and computation, we generally don't always need this approximation. And so it's something useful to note and can be handy in certain cases, but with our co modern computers, it's not necessarily as um, advantageous as it may have been in the past. And so as a closure, let's just briefly introduce what the means and variances of these common discrete distributions are, um, and we can calculate by hand if needed. So if x is a random variable as a Bernoulli at the top, we see that the mean is equal to p and the variance is p times 1 minus p. If we have multiple trials that we're looking at, we actually have a binomial random variable that we see in our second bullet point here. The mean will be equal to n times p, the number of trials times the probability of success, and the variance will look very similar to the Bernoulli with just the addition of n in front of the p times 1 minus p. And finally, for the Poisson random variable, we see the interesting fact here that the mean and variance are assumed to be equal, or they're both equal to lambda. Now this can be shown if we actually want to work through and calculate the mean and the variance or the expectation and variance of a random variable x by hand, but we can note for all intents and purposes and shortcuts we can use the formulas above. And so with that, this concludes our lecture looking at some of the common discrete distributions that we'll encounter and see throughout the semester in BIO 6611.